Hey folks, it's 7.23 p.m. Friday, uh, November 6th. Took me a second. Yes. One of our kids is in bed. The other one is playing games on the iPad. And you know what that means? It's time to get our bake on. Is that better? Yeah, I like it. More confident? Yeah, good. Uh, I'm Teresa McElroy. Oh, right. I'm Travis McElroy. I think we forgot to introduce ourselves last couple times, and here we are. Sure. We are, uh, we are everything. um, That is right with the (laughs) world. We are everything that the cottage core people uh, aspire to be. This is fair. Uh, This is fair. Our tummies are full of, uh, well, mochi for Japanese week, and also... Uh, Black Forest Gato for 80s week. Is that 70s? Now that I think about it, I don't know. They were both around. Sure. Um, so we're very full. Because <laughs> we've got two episodes to talk about. We didn't, uh, we weren't here last week because there, I don't know if you know this, there's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, BB's birthday as well as there's uh, like an election or something. Um, and so we just didn't have a window to do it. So we are doing a two for one. So let's start with week six. It was Japanese week. Yes. The first of its kind. First of its name. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really, I don't know anything about Japanese patisserie. I don't really know anything about, like, Japanese flavor. We hear matcha yeah. tossed around a lot. Um, I think I've had that before. Okay, here's what I will say. Uh, I'm I'm in a similar boat where it is uh, my, my um, baking expertise is much more... Anglo American. Mm-hmm. Um, why did you say that so judging? Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. Why were you so <laughs> judging that? I was. I was not being judgy. I was agreeing wholeheartedly. Sure. Um, but it feels like this was barely scraping the surface of. Yeah. Like the first one is steamed buns, which I don't get me wrong. I love steamed buns. I'm a big old fan of steamed buns. But the second one is a matcha crepe cake, and crepe is not... So the thing about uh, what I know about Japanese patisserie is the core elements are French, right? So, like, patisserie has all of these, like, you know, the creme pat and and creme anglaise and choux pastry and all that stuff. And then I think that Japanese patisserie has taken those elements... And used familiar ingredients and techniques. Okay, but and... sure. Okay, but even like the the showstopper was make a cute cake. Now, granted, yeah. it was make a cute cake in the style of like kawaii. Yes, but it like they could literally make any cake they wanted to. It was like just make it aesthetically look kawaii. Yes. And I don't think that that was as specific as it could have been. Oh, absolutely yes. not. Absolutely not. Okay. I mean, it's it's the same thing where they have in past said make a tart tatin. Right. And the bakers have been like, I'm going to put figs in mine. Right. I'm going to put apples in mine. Like, that's but this not wasn't exactly even that. what that is. What I'm saying is this wasn't even like make blank kind of cake. Mm-hmm. This was a purely aesthetic challenge that was very, for a very specifically themed week. You yes. know what I mean? Not yes. like chocolate week, where it's like, make something that features chocolate. Mm-hmm. This is like Japanese week, and it was like, I don't know, make it kind of look Japanese. Like, I I think that that I was not- I see where you're coming from, which yeah. is probably why the bakers did not quite hit it. Yeah. So let's talk about, uh, oh, I should also say, Lottie won this week. Yes. Which, at that point, that puts it at week six, everybody that was left, except Hermine- Mm-hmm. One, has one star baker, yes. right? So I, I've pulled up a list here because we watched the two, and I don't want to get him confused. I thought her means panda buns were very cute. Yeah, well, they looked not exactly like pandas. The eyes were just not quite like the the ring of black around the eyes wasn't big enough. They looked a little bit like puppies. Can I? Talk about for a second, Peter, in week six and week seven. Spoiler, we're going to end up talking about both of them kind of intermingled. Yes. I feel like Peter, okay, I'm looking at the list here. Peter in week six was first in technical, did the lamb steam buns, which were, uh, it, it, they said like they weren't filled enough and like the way you filled them, they ended up like deflating a little bit. They were completely edible. They sure. just weren't amazing. Um, But his shuttlecock showstopper, they really liked. Yes. And then Super cute. if you look at the 80s week, his curry and salmon quiches were okay. 
Mm-hmm. He got second in technical, and they loved his Christmas cake thing. They said the uh, Paul said that the cake layer was a little thick because the fruit in it, but like that was his complaint. In neither week was he like in the running for Star Baker. Do you think they expect more from Peter? Yes. I think that's exactly what it is. I think at this point, he has been so consistent that it's just like, yeah, Peter's doing great. I uh, I also, and this is just me, it's hard for me not to develop theories. As you know, I have a very overactive imagination. Mm. But it is interesting to me that if you look at the first seven episodes, there has not been a repeat star baker. Yeah. And now there will have to be, because at this point moving forward, everyone in the tent has gotten it once. Mm-hmm. But for seven weeks, no repeats. I really, I think that this s- series especially um, shows how difficult it has been to to practice in, a, in an unfamiliar place. That's not what I'm saying, go, though. What do you mean? What I'm saying is it's hard for me not to go, are they intentionally spreading it around? Oh, yes. producers with their fingers in the pot. Well, because I'm saying like in the past when it's been like, well, this person got it like f- got four out of the six star bakers. Mm-hmm. They're definitely going to the finals if not winning. Right. But there's never there's never been a week where I thought mm, Peter might go home this week. Right. Like right. Peter's going to the final three. Yes. He has he has yet to have like a big especially if you look through his let's. I've got it pulled up here. Let's look at his technicals, okay? Week one, uh, Peter was second. Week two, Peter was 10th. That was not a good one for Biscuits. Week three, Peter was fourth out of 10. Week four, Peter was fourth out of nine. Week five, he was first. Week six, he was first. Week seven, he was second. He does, uh, besides Biscuit Week, he has been in the top four, if not one, technical, like six weeks out of seven. And I'm saying, like, he does not seem to get the attention from the judges. Like, even this week, where they're like, ooh, Armin did pretty good. Oh, and Mark did pretty good, too. And it's like, yeah, but so did Peter. And they didn't even mention his name. Mm. It was very frustrating to me. And I think Paul is especially tough on him. Yes. Well, think- we we have decided that Paul has picked Peter as his protege. He tends to do that. I, I can't remember the dude's name, but the guy with like the dark curly hair who was very young, who never seemed to do a good was, job. I think his name was John, wasn't it? Maybe. But Paul like very specifically like seem to want to guide him and mold him or whatever yeah. where peter it seems like he's being tough on him for some reason it's like he's looking for things to like le- speaking of being tough once again another week without a handshake it's like yeah. four weeks in a row yeah again maybe you're right maybe it's like the producers being like listen these are the things that the people said on the twitters they didn't like maybe maybe uh in japanese week it's also important to note was the 100th Episode uh, at this point, Paul is the only one left mm-hmm. to for it to be his one hundred. They didn't like make a big deal out of it. Yeah, there is like Noel was like Paul. It is in your one hundred episode. I imagine it's hard to make a big deal out of it when Paul is the only one, one left. Yeah, it, like they can't be like, uh, let's take a look back. Um, so the I wonder if they counted like master class and holiday and all that stuff in there. Well. I mean, we can figure it out because it's like 10. Okay, not important. (laughs) So Steam Buns, uh, this is also week six and week seven in the signature. Lottie did the same kind of idea as somebody else. Um, Which I I was like, well, these are very general ideas. In the Japanese week, she did Steam Buns that were cheeseburger, which like, hello, sandwich, meat. Yeah, but I mean cheeseburger, and then I wouldn't immediately think of a cheeseburger steam bun. But like, I get it. I understand what you're saying. I'm not. I'm just what saying. What is a beef bun? I mean, it's a cheeseburger. Okay, I don't know what this rude tooth <laughs> is. <laughs> and for this, for uh, '80s week, she did English breakfast. Yeah, and English breakfast is all over makeup. That is all true. the time. The full breakfast, in, full English is like yeah, it comes up all the time. Um, I would say the ones they really liked. Uh, I don't know that there was a steam bun that they were like, oh, this is very good. Like. 
I think that they had some where they're like, oh, I like this. This is good. Yeah. But I don't think anybody like especially nailed them. Uh, then they did the matcha crepe cake. And oh, you guys. Can I tell you? Wait a second. Skipping back just a little bit. Okay. To the, the doll buns. I. Those are marks. Yeah. Don't like. The salt and pepper mark. I think that. Um, although they were a similar, I don't, they were kind of like domey. Yeah. They were pinched, not quite like a, a Japanese bun. Yeah. They looked more like a, a uh, bow. Is that what it is? No, chipau, chipudi? No. Uh, it's an Indian, mm, not I samosa because it's not fried, but a steamed, a steamed Indian bun. And it even had dal in it. Yeah. Like, and that's not Japanese. That's vaguely Asian. If you, if that was your theme, let's do Asian. Sure, you could do that, but like, I don't agree with it. I think that uh, the ingredients should have been limited. The um, technical, the matcha crepe cakes, man, when they put them to the table, I would say two thirds <laughs> of them are like, ooh, rough, rough stuff, guys. Especially when something like that, like very clearly, you can see in technical sometimes. Sometimes the technical is about like. Uh, substance, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's like about the look, yeah. and this look was way. Uh, they even said like that some of them like we set a semicircle and you did a circle. Like they were they were like yeah. very. We're going for a specific look here, and some of them were too flat. Some of them look like mounds of grass. It reminded me a lot of Princess Torta. Yes, yes, very much so. I agree. Where they were looking for the dome, they wanted the flowers, they wanted the chocolate work, like it needed to be specific as they said in the recipe. Like they didn't make it, they didn't make anybody guess what shape the the fruit should be in. They said crescent. Yeah. You know, I feel, why am I so aggressive this week? I don't know, you're very frustrated about this. I don't well, know. Well, you did in the middle of recording, Teresa had to go take care of a screaming baby for like 15 minutes. And I think you came back you with, that's you came back with a, oh, I'm ready to talk about some burger. <laughs> Let's talk about these cakes. Well, give me your champagne then. Oh, okay. Um, so let's talk about the kawaii cakes. Um, I, okay, here's the ones I liked. I thought Dave's Shiba Inu cake was very so cute. So cute. It was the very cute. Eyes. I thought it was the closest to like what the look was going for. I also thought the pineapple upside down cake that Laura did. Mm. Was aesthetically was a now they they said the thing about like it doesn't look enough like a pineapple, but I thought it looked plenty like a pineapple. Looked more like a turnip to me. Okay, no, it did not. It no. wasn't skinny, long and skinny enough. To it be was a pineapple. yellow. Yeah, well, so are onions. But you didn't say onion. I said turnip. Turnips yeah. are red. I don't know. Okay, but like, okay, I get it. I get it. Also, didn't she, like, just decorate a cake stand? You know, I don't know. Okay. Anyway. I also liked Peter's, the shuttlecock. Mm Mm-hmm. I also... I like you little little sparkler. It was funny. cute. Now, here's the thing. The avocado baby that Mark, Ginger Mark, did, Mm -hmm. I thought was cute. Mm Mm-hmm. But clearly, there was just no substance to it whatsoever. Basically, when they made it, they were like, when they tasted it, they were like, this doesn't really taste like anything. And I think that we saw that in both the weeks where mm-hmm. like somebody made like a bold style choice or something. Right. And then Paul was like, yeah, but I don't, it doesn't taste right. Yeah. And so I think that that really hurt that he was like, big swing with the avocado in the cake thing and then it was like nothing well because i think that if he had made an avocado looking cake and there was an avocado in it they would have been like but what yeah but he didn't get the taste right he didn't get the flavor right i think that avocado in a cake is is just bland i don't know i think you might be able to get away with guacamole cake because it would be lime and avocado yeah. and and things like that and salt and stuff but like even that that's a very savory taste hey can i tell you oh, something I'm sorry i need to decompress a you are bit. judging these people and i love I, I honestly <laughs> i'm here for it and i love it can i tell you something that has just occurred to me talking about it and looking over these aside from peter who has i think been very consistent i think that everybody on the season has been wildly inconsistent they talked about it on week seven with Laura, where it's like, 
every, I think the reason, maybe the other reason to explain why everyone has gotten Starbaker once is everyone will have like one week where it's just like, oh, knocked it out of the park. Yeah. It was incredible. And then like the next week, it's like, oh, oh, uh, you kind of felt, except for Peter. Yeah. Who is just quietly going about his business, nailing it. Well, wait a second. Let's check for Curse of the Star Baker. Okay. So, so yeah. So uh, week one. Week one, the Star Baker was Peter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Mac went home week two. But he was, so he was 10th biscuit week. That was his worst week. Yeah. True. True, true, true. Uh, Dave won week two. And then Dave was ninth in technical. Uh, and Rowan week ho- went home week three. Uh, Mark was sec. Uh, Mark won week three, and then he was sixth in technical week four. Uh, other Mark won week four, and was there. So that wasn't it. Okay. But in week six is the clearest example. We have Lottie won week six and then went home week seven. Yeah, uh, you Ugh. got the first to worst. And I think that, I think it's just like, I don't know. It's just been a wildly, like, the reason I thought of it is in week six, in the showstopper, Hermine did this cake that was like, not the brief. That They were like, yeah, this is nice, but it's not cute. I mean, it's yeah. pretty, it's not cute. And then she won week seven. Yeah. And it's just like, everybody seems to be, except for Peter, except for my son, Peter, <laughs> everybody seems to be like, if this is a thing I know... I do well at it, but I, it's like I think I, that your your producer uh, puppeteer kind of theory makes a little bit of sense here, um, but also I feel like everything is just so wildly different maybe. about this season. Like all of the parameters are totally different. Most people like unless that you have children, uh, most people are away from their families. Um, they are staying in a place where they don't feel like super comfortable. They have to work outside in a tent to practice. Who knows what else they also have to do if they're like doing like, I don't know, virtual work or who knows. Well, Lottie said she only brought two outfits and had to borrow clothes from people. (laughs) Yeah. So I, I can't imagine the kind of stress these bakers are under that in other seasons would have been much more controlled for them. Except for Peter. Except except, except for, for Peter. Peter. I'm saying Peter seems to be doing quietly fine the whole time. <laughs> I think Noel even pointed out in week seven where he was like, oh yeah, I can tell you're really freaking out or something. Like, like Peter was just like, boo, 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 boo. <laughs> Everybody else is like sweating, you know, because in week seven it was so hot and Peter was just like, do, 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 making beautiful cake. Um, so let's talk more about week seven. Okay. 80s week, which I also think is another first. I don't remember there being an 80s week. Um, I mean, they've definitely done some throwback bakes. Yeah. Because Mary was always putting things like from her books. Sure. In there. Um, but like specifically 80s, I don't think so. Okay. They started with quiche and maybe I was just. Why do I feel like Brendan had like a, like he, they he did a He talked 70s. a lot. Well, no, he talked a lot about, they did do a 70s, didn't they? Because they made like the Black Forest Gato. And they made Rumbabas. Yeah, maybe it was a 70s week. I don't know. But they haven't done 80s. I'm almost sure. Uh, they start with quiches and it made me really hungry for some reason. <laughs> I don't always get that. You dig the savory, though. I you think love I a savory do. I, I like a quiche. I like a quiche. <laughs> Listen, folks, I'm not allowed to say it. I like a quiche. Um, and Dave, oh, this week, this week, folks, sometimes there will be a thing where you will see either Prue or Paul or both react to somebody's idea and you're like, oh, you guys. Yeah. Dave had this idea for his quiche that it was going to also contain scrambled eggs and quiche's egg custard. And so he was going to put chunks of scrambled egg into egg custard. And here's the thing. You might say, like, well, what about putting chunks of chocolate into, like, chocolate sponge? Mm, Different. (laughs) Because the thing about the egg custard for a quiche is you don't want to scramble it, right? Exactly. It needs to be smooth. And so adding in the chunks is like, that's not what I wanted. Yeah. And we also ran into, okay, in we- Crew particularly was like, this does not make any sense. Yeah, right off the bat. And also, in so in week six- 
they had a matcha challenge. Mm -hmm. I know Paul doesn't like matcha. Yeah. He's talked about it a lot. And in week seven, Lottie was like, I'm putting beans in. And Prue was like, well, <laughs> I hate beans. She even said, like, we have to try to put our prejudices aside because I hate beans. Yeah. And it's like, oh, no. I feel like that's a thing they should tell bakers ahead of time because I feel like no matter how objective the judges are trying to be, like, we've seen it with banana, right? Yeah. Anytime somebody's like, I'm putting banana in Paul it. loves banana. And it's like, if you get that flavor wrong, He's, You're out. Yeah, he's going to toss you. Right? And it's like, okay, well, it's important to know. I mean, I guess you could just pay attention and re- watch previous seasons to know that, mm-hmm. to know that rose water is, like, very and tricky. Lavender. And lavender. And so tricky. And, like, Paul doesn't like matcha and stuff. But it's like, I always feel so I feel like bad. this might be the first thing that Prue has said she doesn't like. Yeah. I can't recall anything I, else. And I think it might be a new thing. I don't remember her ever saying I don't mm-hmm. like baked beans before. And so this feels like a, well, <laughs> bye. Um, so there was that. Um, Hermine did classic quiche. And me and class, I, I always say classic and classic quiche. Flavor sounded great. But also a classic um, kind of a wonderful bake off moment where she's like, I'm not going to get this done. And Laura's like, let me help you. Here's some advice on where to set your oven. And then she finished her quiches and she was like, ugh, I don't think they're good. And then Paul and Prue were like, this is great. Yeah. I love this. I, I do think though that Prue was like, well, we used to eat quiche Lorraine all the time and I'm looking for something a little more inventive. And then of course they go back and they're like, we love the classic stuff, delicious. Well, I think- I mean, that goes to show you that if you do something simple, you have to do it so well that you blow the expectations. Right, because I think if you look across everybody else's ideas, there were some big flavor swings mm-hmm. in this one where they were like, I'm doing a pizza quiche. I'm doing the full English. Um, I'm doing a, you know, the Thai curry and salmon quiche, which was great. Um, but I'm trying to remember what marks the Cornish quiche is. They were like, this is too similar. Yeah. Um, did we mention Ginger Mark went home last week in week six? And that, no, I don't think we did, I, but he did. I was. It was the first one that got me. Yeah. But I also think we've reached the point now where people who I think are good at it have to go home. Right. Because it's not about as much as they say it's this person has been really consistent. They really try and judge on that week's bakes so that even if we really like someone, if they've been doing so well, but. If it's a bad bake, it's a bad bake. I think week six was the first time somebody went home when it was like, yeah, you know what? There wasn't a huge mistake. It wasn't a huge, you know, like, miscalculation. He just didn't do the best. He was just, like, not the best. Yeah. I think that that went the other way in week seven, unfortunately. Um, okay, we'll get to it. It was custard. Can I tell you that it really messes me up that week seven is the 80s? I keep thinking it's it was week eight. eight. Oh, you're right. I didn't, and now I'm bothered by it. Thank you for sharing that with me. The technical was the uh, custard and jam finger donuts. Um, and the thing about this, as soon as they revealed the fryers, I was like, oh man. Because yeah. this is the thing, if you it's think- It's always rough. Well, it's just not a thing that a lot of people have experience with at home. Mm -hmm. Like, I bake a lot and I cook a lot. I don't have a deep fryer in my home, right? It's a very specialized thing, right? right? Not a lot of people have, let alone the means, but, like, the counter space. I feel like when we encounter a baker who's like, I make donuts every week, they have a deep fat fryer. Like, Richard? Yes. Richard says he he made this donut or whatever once a week for the last two years or whatever. Right. And I think James also was talking about donuts, uh, having those all the time. But, like, I we don't make donuts no. every week. We go and buy donuts. They're really hard. To, well, we don't buy donuts every week. Please don't make it sound <laughs> like we buy donuts every week. When we want donuts, okay, yes. we buy donuts. But it is it's such a specialized thing. Yeah. Like, you, it's, it, so, uh, as soon as the fire, especially when it's so hot, mm. when it's so hot in the tent, they're like, oh, also, Here's just some boiling oil sitting on the counter. Have <laughs> fun. Um, Dave blew it because he made, I believe in my wife's words, <laughs> shoes. 
<laughs> they did. They looked like little wooden shoes. They looked like <laughs> shoes. Uh, and Hermine nailed it. Got first. Yep. They loved it. I feel like everybody else was like, eh, eh, it, it's fine. It, it's fine. It's yeah, edible. Fine. Yeah. Except for that one. But Dave Dave changed the settings. He figured it out by the end. But of course, they picked the one that looks like a shoe. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the ice cream cake. We've got a lot to talk about here. Oh, man. So this is not the first time we've seen an ice cream cake. Mm-hmm. Ice cream, anything ice cream based has always been notoriously difficult. In ben the Gate. The Ben Gate, right. Because, like, it gets real hot. And people get all hot and bothered. People get hot and bothered up in the end. They get all hot and under the collar. And the thing is, is with ice cream, I've I've only ever made ice cream once with like an ice cream maker, much mm-hmm. like they use this time. And it always takes longer than you think. Like it's not yeah. it's it's not a thing like baking where you could say like it's like forty to fifty minutes. It's like I don't know. This one took forty five minutes. This one took an hour and thirty. You, you yeah, take it's time. just when it's done, it's done. This time they did give them the ice cream makers, though, which was mm-hmm. new, which maybe that was a mercy because they knew how hot it was in the tent. Wait a second. Wait a second. They didn't. They did ice cream makers for Ben Gates year. No. What did they make them in? They just like stirred them a bunch. Nuh-uh. No, they had paddles. Maybe they had paddles in like a stirrer thing, but. You mean a mixer? Sure. No. No, they had ice cream makers. Hey, can I we remember, not fight in front of the I podcast audience? I uh, remember watching um, Chetna pull the paddle out of the ice cream maker. Mm, like you're pulling this out of your butt? And it was covered in yellow mango ice cream. Okay, perhaps so you're correct. So delicious. Uh, so Laura ran into, ugh, what a goof. What a gaff, folks. Didn't yeah. press the button. You. Uh, here's what I will say. While I hate to see it, I always do find it satisfying when a baker is like, I don't know what's wrong, and then they figure out what's wrong. Yeah. I always think like the hanging in the air of like, I've done this a hundred times, and it's always worked, and this time it didn't, and there's no reason why. That leaves me unfulfilled. Here are the reasons. You did not preheat your oven. Right. Your oven is not on. I love the mystery <laughs> solved. I love the mystery solved. You did not press the ice cream button. So while I felt really bad for her, I did like that she figured it out. That she made me did, happy. And, I mean, I think that she did the best that she could seeing that, I mean, her ice cream just did nothing for 40 minutes. So let's talk about Lottie. Mm. Here's I the had th- her, I've, I've had her in my top three and now she's gone. This was such a, uh, as soon as Lottie was like, I'm putting the ice cream on the outside. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I barely know what I'm doing, and I know you don't mm-hmm. do that. I it's ice I it's couldn't ice believe cream. It. I couldn't believe it. It's ice cream. And now she later said that it was a new recipe, which ugh, and that she had made it previously in a tin. Yeah, what? why didn't she make it in a tin? I have no idea why. But I, I mean, at least if you make it in the tin, you clean film the tin, right? You put it you put the chocolate ice cream in you put the cake in you turn it over you take the tin off at the last second like that why didn't she do that i mean and this she is... tried to spread ice cream on a cake in like a 40 degree tent at 40 degree celsius, celsius. <laughs> um paul to his credit because usually he's very careful of like is this what you're doing and then he tries to go like stone face mm-hmm. and he was talking to her like you're putting ice cream on the outside is that really Ooh, are you sure about that like he did everything but say don't do that. Yeah. But here's the thing. I don't know at that point, I because I thought about it, if I was in Lottie's shoes, and that was my plan, and Paul came around and was like, I don't think that's a good idea. What would I do? What, like, would I been like, oh, okay, great. I'll put some sponge around it, I guess. I don't know. But it goes um, poorly. Here's, here's what I would have done. Um, I think that I would have done as planned until the chocolate ice cream would have added chocolate ice cream as the last layer and then chopped off the edges to make it look very smart the way you do for like an opera cake. Mm. So that then she had the tempered chocolate kind of like um, cassette look on the top and then would be very square. Yeah, I think that's what I would have done. 
I mean, it, it it also because she was spending so much time trying to scoop the ice cream on and figure out how to keep it. Yeah. She also ran out of time to do the decoration, mm-hmm. and so it it was one of those things where halfway through the showstopper, I was like, Lottie is going home. And Lottie then again, is like we're we're talking about how we would have changed and corrected and done all that stuff, and then we also know that they have to submit their recipes, but like omission. That would be fine, right? Like, well, and if she had been able to keep it together in the way you describe, Laura would have gone home. Yeah, like the the thing is, is like in a week in which Lottie does not have that disaster, Laura was so clearly also bad. Like, I think that Laura's cake, she made the mistake of not starting the thing, right? Yeah. But the design was solid. Where Lottie's was like, you should have known better than that, and I think that that was the factor. That got her sent home. Not on. Oh, okay. Wait a second. While we're talking about Lottie's missteps, also, Paul said that her um, her berry flavored ice cream was supposed to be blackberry. Didn't taste like yeah. much. Also, uh, didn't she make like a rice krispie treat bottom? Yeah, but he said that was good. That was like the one thing he liked. Oh, really? Was okay. like the that thing. And whereas Laura's, she had a brownie base. Yeah. And it had to go in the freezer. And I was like, you can't freeze brownies. Like, it, it doesn't work the same way. I quite like frozen brownies. Yeah, but you know that's not how brownies are intended oh, to be of consumed. Course not. Of course not. Okay. It just feels like a brick. And it, I think <laughs> if you look at, if you look, so Laura was fourth in technical, Lottie was fifth. And I think that Lottie's signature, they liked. Uh, they, I, and whereas I think Laura's signature had the leak that, Sorry, looked completely unappetizing. It was this like weird brown black cr- thing on the crust, which looked terrible, and like they weren't super thrilled by her flavors, right? So I'm saying, in a different world, where Lottie fails a little bit less on her showstopper, Laura would have gone home. Yeah, gosh, look at Dave. He really coasted, didn't he? Yeah, he really did. <sighs> they weren't like. <laughs> Thrilled about his quiche, he got six and technical, and his tiramisu was, eh. but it wasn't a disaster. That's right. what I'm saying. Is like, you know, say what you will about Ben Gate, right? But how good would his sponge have had to be for him to not go home that week? Also, right? Like, yeah, I mean, he had he had problems with the ice cream, and he like threw it away. In case you all don't know. But like we're talking about Ian. So there was a season where Ian they were making uh, baked Alaska, which is like sponge chocolate or sponge ice cream and then like a meringue over it and you bake it. Right. Or you torch it. Torch most of the people. And his ice cream didn't set supposedly because uh, what's her face moved it out of the freezer. But But in real life, it it, was only out of there like 30 seconds. It it just it wasn't setting the whole time. And he got so frustrated. He just threw the whole thing away and and left the tent and left the tent. (laughs) Um, And then they said during judging of like, we could have judged the sponge. We could have judged this. And it's like, yeah, but he also still would have gone. How good would your sponge have had to be to be like, well, the briefing was an ice cream cake and you didn't Mm -hmm. do it. I don't know. I mean, Norman was not very good that week either. He made just like maybe vanilla ice cream. <laughs> this is true, but that is Norman's whole deal. Yeah, vanilla, vanilla. Um. So now we are down to here's who's left: Dave, Hermine, Laura, Mark, and Peter. Going into next week is dessert week. Peter's in my top three. There yeah. is no universe to me. Like Peter would have to f not up. show up. Yeah. <laughs> Right, because the thing is, is he's had off challenges, but like it has been a like one off out of three. Yeah, where it's just like, oh yeah, we're not wild about that one. But then you got first in technical, and you did good in your showstopper. Yeah. Um. So I would be surprised if he doesn't make it, if not win. Mm-hmm. Then past that, honestly, I've been thinking about oh. it, and it's a crapshoot because it's like. Who does well in the next two weeks? Who yeah. does bad? We've seen weeks where Hermine does bad. We've seen weeks where Dave does bad. We've seen La- Laura has done bad more weeks than she's done good. I feel like a lot of times you see, by this point, you see them kind of split into two groups, yeah. right? The ones that are pretty much guaranteed to make it to the final, and then the ones that just 
eke by by not going home. Right. You know? But at this point, there's just there's just Peter really. Anybody could go home except Peter could go home next week. And like anybody could be Star Baker. Like it's the kind of thing where maybe Mark has a great week and he's Star Baker again. Maybe Dave has a great week and he's Star Baker again. Maybe yeah. Laura has a great week and she's Star Baker again. But maybe they all have off weeks and what if it like Yeah. I don't no. And that is actually kind of interesting to me because like I the one thing I will say, I love this show. In mm-hmm. case it's not obvious, Teresa and I love Great British Bake Off. But Yeah. This is maybe the least that I have been gripped. Uh, not that I'm not enjoying it. I am. I'm watching it and I'm loving it and it's great. But the Drama isn't there in past. In past, it's like, oh, anybody could win, especially when you get down to like final four, right? Final five, even sometimes it's like, oh, who's it going to be? And I'm just not feeling that because I feel just like everybody is doing. I it's. I don't think anybody isn't doing their best. It just feels like, as you have said, there's a lot of factors at play that are making it difficult to focus, to practice, to yeah, bring it. Um, and it's just not gripping me the way that said, maybe I'll look back on this season and it will be a season that I grow to love in the future. Mm-hmm. But this one is not a standout to me so far. I'm trying to find, we, we used to listen to this show, the worst idea of all time. Uh huh. And they talk about shining light, shining light, Peter, Peter's great. Sure. Peter is great. But you know, I think that the, the shining light for over the whole season is Matt's voiceovers. Yes, I will say, I think Matt Matt is a wonderful addition that really bumps up the levels for me, especially just watching him and Noel play together. Mm-hmm. Seems like they're having a lot of fun. I will also say another shining light. It seems like because of this quarantine, it, the bakers in the tent are very close. Yes, there's there. a lot of banter. A lot of banter, I a lot like of that. good friends, a lot of helping each other out. I will also say, man, I'm, I'm gonna miss Lottie because yeah. she had this really snarky, sarcastic, but fun humor that I really enjoyed on this week seven when she got when she got the boot, she looked at Laura and was like, "Laura, please stop crying." <laughs> and like it was so just like funny and wonderful. Like I I like her. And that's the thing is I I think more than anything everybody grew on me really quickly except Rowan. Maybe, maybe that's why why it feels so much like uh, it doesn't feel like a bummer. It just feels like. A constant disappointment? Is right. that it? Is well, that what it is? Here's what I think it is. is in, in previous seasons, at least for me, and maybe this isn't a universal experience, but at least for me, there's been much clearer, I hate to use this word because it makes it sound like The Bachelor or something, but much clearer storylines where it's like, oh, look at them improve and she's gaining confidence and, oh, he's loosening up and that kind of thing. Sure, yeah. Okay. Where... I'm just not feeling that. Like we expect it to be kind of scattered, right? Scatter shot at the beginning when there's twelve or thirteen right. bakers. But at this point there's usually a lot more um drama. Yeah. And and people's kind of people's style, people's tendencies have started to emerge more where it's like oh she's always style over substance or like oh he's always trying too hard or oh her flavors are always you know the highlight or yeah whatever. like when rob was putting like lime and coconut in everything right. like, it is always lime and coconut and and or it's like you know you had flora who was like why are you doing eight things that aren't in the brief and <laughs> yeah. not for, right and i don't feel like we've seen any kind of consistent things like that except for people. peter except for peter except for my son my son Peter <laughs> is doing great. Is this going to be like our Martha? I'm proud of my boy. I'm proud of my boy. He's doing great. He seems pleasant. I will say, here. let me tell you about my robot son. He's very <laughs> consistent, but also it doesn't seem like anybody is like especially taken with Peter. And it's not like, oh, yeah, but he's best friends with everybody. Like, oh, who was the dude last season who wore a tie like at everything and he was adorable and great and everybody loved him? You remember Henry. Henry. Because there was Henry and Michael and What's Her Face, who were like three good friends and they still hang out now. I want to say. Christine. Is that it? No. No. Anyways, the three, anyway. the three of them are like friends, right? And it's like, oh, this is great. They hang out now still. It's wonderful. 
And I now it just feels like everyone's kind of loosely friends. But no, you never see Peter and other people in the same shot because he's a robot. <laughs> I don't think that they're just loosely friends. They basically live together. No, I just mean they're they're all friends. Like that group seems to be friends. And I never seem to see people bantering with Peter. Oh, well, but uh, Noel was talking about how Lottie's a little in love with Peter. Well, who wouldn't be? My son is very cute. Have you seen those eyes? Beautiful. They've got a, quite a sparkle to them. Um, okay. So right now, of course, Peter is my front runner. If if I repressed Dave and Armin, yeah, I maybe agree with for that. final three. I think maybe Mark. Maybe Mark, but he he does a good job hitting the middle every time. Mm. Where I feel like Laura takes big swings and is either great or bad, more often bad than great. Um and I but but Mark I feel like I feel like he's making it to final four, but I I don't know that he has the potential to consistently nail it every time. But I mean right now we're down to final five. Right. Can so, I tell you that I'm so disappointed that Lottie did such a bad job that it's yeah. hard for me to pick. Okay. Well we're gonna wrap it up then. Um, you're all great, and I bet next week dessert is very exciting. I'm Which has about. a different meaning in the UK than it does in in the US. It does. Yeah. Well, everything everything after dinner or after a meal is dessert here, but dessert in the UK is like a specific kind of treat. Okay. Well, I look forward to watching that. What is our uh? Oh, now I've forgotten the name of the word. What's the preposition? preposition. What's the preposition, Teresa? Bake beneath. <laughs>